Hello everyone and welcome to our bonus demonstration today about color mixing. Um, if you remember yesterday our Mingos, I don't know where my Mingo went, but our Mingos, um, oh here he is, we were able to do this Mingo with um, just four colors and look at the bright beautiful colors that we were able to get um you know as as we talk about painting and you know you walk into a, a hobby lobby or a michael's or i mean i just got to go to charvin and there are all the colors and the colors are so beautiful, but it can be like kind of overwhelming. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that. As we get going, I want to see in the comments, I want to know what you guys named your flamingo, if you named your flamingo. Um, we <laughs> we had, uh, as the Creative Circle group, we just had a members only workshop uh, last week where we met together for a couple weeks and we all painted roosters and we painted them. Um, we used some different techniques from what I typically use. And we had a lot of fun experimenting and trying new things and really trying some different techniques to get some uh, definition and layering and uh, depth to our work in, in a really different way. And it was a lot of fun. And I was, I was just, chuckling so hard because I didn't realize roosters were like such a loaded topic um, when until we painted them together and there were so many <laughs> stories about Mr. Nemesis and um, uh, there's a lot of emotions attached to roosters and I knew my husband doesn't have a high opinion of roosters because he grew up on a farm in Kansas and they had chickens growing up and they had some roosters and uh, they attacked my sister-in-law when they were little. So, but I didn't realize how many people had, had <laughs> similar experiences. Um, so mostly with the flamingos, it's uh, been very positive experiences. We've definitely had some people telling us they're super excited and the flamingos are their spirit animals. So, you know, that's what we wanted to bring to this experience was a lot of, um, fun and happy and color and joy um and and uh i so i want to know what you guys have f named your mingos we have franzi uh, maria has a rooster named cletus flow the flamingo i love that that is so much fun um so we had such a frida flamingo um agnes i love Ag so Agnes is one of our Creative Circle members, and she usually does more than one of whatever painting we do to experiment and try different techniques and see how she gets, um, which one she likes the best. And so she's working on multiple flamingos right now, and they are called the Future Fabulous Flamingos, which I just love. Um, so Mr. M Mr. Moustache, I moustache you a question. <laughs> I love that. Big headed bird. Um, Carolyn hasn't named hers. Sharon is Floyd the Flamingo. These are all fabulous names. I love what y'all have been naming them. Um, Rosanna named hers Nan and Carr for her two sisters who have homes in Fort Myers and Leesburg. I love that. I just love that. Um, so a Amy, if your screen is frozen, our feed is good. Uh, obviously, if I'm frozen, you probably can't hear me say this, but if you do run into some dragging, it's probably your connection. What we recommend that you do is refresh the page and it'll get started again. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, I had wanted to show you guys because we have been in there and I have been loving your Florida Strong selfies as uh, people get into the replays and as you guys are uh, going back and looking at what we did, I wanted to cheer some of you guys on. So first of all, I wanted to see how many people had studio assistants. 
How many of you all had studio assistants like Wendy Turner? This is Wendy. She is one of our newest Creative Circle members. Uh, she has an organized, organized, I love how as artists, our setups are always, you know, creatively organized, I like to say. And um, she has a studio assistant that believes she should be the subject. Um, I love your kitty cat. Carlotta also just joined and she has a wonderful kitty cat as well. So I'm curious how many of y'all also have studio assistants. Um, Rosemary, who's our gallery manager and community manager, who most of y'all are talking to, she has um, 200 pounds of fur at her house. And so she's had to actually move into a carriage house in order to keep the fur out of her painting. Um, so, you know, we all have our challenges as artists. Um, so I wanted to give a shout out. You know, it, it truly doesn't matter how old you are when you get started. So many people have said, I think it's too late. I think I've, I, I don't think that I can have the time anymore. And you can do this at any age. It's never too late to start. Um, there are artists in their 90s that are doing this and have been doing this. And here is Joanne, who just joined the Creative Circle. She's 74. She first picked up a brush six weeks ago. For just picking up a brush six weeks ago, this is incredible. This is awesome. You're mixing the colors. You're getting them down on the canvas. You've got some great brush strokes. You are already making progress, Joanne, and we are so excited to see you in the creative circle. So this is Elizabeth. She, this is her first um, painting with me. And so I just want to say, hey, Elizabeth, I love it. Um, this is Diane. This is her first class as well. And I love her Florida Strong selfie. Um, here is Megan. She hasn't picked up a brush in 15 years. So even if, you know, it's been a while, if you've had to, you know, if you've had to put it all aside because of kids or career or life or whatever, it's never too late to get going again. It's never too late to get into the practice and tap into that side of yourself. Um, and here is Linda. So I love this. She did this on some scrap paper. Um, she said that she said that um, she had an artist in Hawaii tell her once it's all about the easel time, and that's what we say. It's you just have to get the reps in. You just have to work on the skills, and you'll see so much improvement. Um, and I love that you did it on paper because then it's not as precious. It's like a great practice, and you can do it again and again. And then when you're, when you feel really comfortable, then you can put it on a canvas. Um, so Grace is one of our creative circle members. She went rogue. Um, she never likes the first one, especially when she sees everyone else's. I'll try again and get some, um, wave in the feathers and do better on colors. Um, she was compromising with what you had at the house and that's awesome. Like Pam, you have incredible brush strokes like look at the definition in those strokes and look at the movement like you'll figure it out and and you know just keep trying it's it's you're gonna get there so this is Lori she just joined the creative circle and here's her Florida strong selfie and here's Becca Becca is one of our incredible creative circle members she's been with us for a while and I have loved cheering her on and seeing what she's doing all the time um, so thank you Becca and I love your what she's doing and where she's going with it she is making so much strides in her art in the in ways she never even thought that she could and Amy Amy is another one of our members. I'm so excited that I get to finally meet her in person at our retreat in just a couple weeks. Um, she held the paint party with her friend because art is better with friends. Am I right? And um, I'm a little jealous that I didn't get to attend. <laughs> that looked like so much fun. Um, and then we have Lisa. Lisa. Um, so if you see, there is the cow workshop in the background as well. So she did the mingo and the cow with us. 
and here is Cherie. And I just wanted to give a big shout out to Cherie. I doubt she's here today, um, but Cherie said that she was going into surgery today. And so I want to send you all of the healing vibes. I hope that you have a speedy and fast recovery from your surgery and that you get better very soon. Um, and here is Tracy Sue's Florida Strong selfie. And we have Jennifer. Um, this is another first timer. And I just want to point out that if you, this was your first time, you guys are doing something incredible. And what I'm seeing out of y'all is just incredible. You have it in you. You have it in you to be an artist. And I'm seeing like incredible brush strokes. I'm seeing really incredible movement. I'm seeing so much good stuff that I, I don't want you, if you found some friction, if you found some challenges, that's great. That gives you something to work on. Um, I mean, I've been an artist for a very long time and I hit plateaus, I hit challenges and, and there's, I'm also never finished because the second that I was finished and I feel like I've accomplished any, everything, it's kind of boring. Like what's the point anymore? If you, if you know it all, like there's always more to learn. There's always more to do. We're on this like really long journey and I still hope to be doing this when I'm 90. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to throw a shout out to everybody. Like I've been, um, just loving what you've been doing. Um, Lorraine is Lorraine Stevens is one of our creative circle members. We actually have two creative circle members with, uh, uh, compromised arms. I wanted to give a huge shout out to Margo. Margo is one of our creative circle members. She just broke her arm and it's her uh, dominant hand. And she has decided to start painting with her left hand um, because she's enjoying painting so much and she doesn't want to lose six or eight weeks to being in a cast. And so that that's just incredible. She's going to develop so many crazy skills and you're going to get Margo, you're going to get all this cool stuff coming from not using your dominant hand because you can't control it like you can your dominant hand. So you're going to wind up with some really interesting brushwork and that's going to be super, super cool. Um, and Lorraine currently has a sling on her arm. Y'all, you need to stop hurting yourselves. Um, we, we need to keep you healthy. <laughs> But I wish you a speedy recovery as well. So, um, and I wanted to give a shout out to everyone that has joined the Creative Circle since yesterday. So that is Paulette and Nicole, Lori, Jean, Wendy, Rosanna, Margaret, Michelle, Heather, Joanne, Lynn, Teresa, Leslie, and Lynn. So all of y'all are going to be getting our, uh, which shoulder is it over? Our winter Robin is, uh, going to be our special bonus just for you. We're going to, we're going to put that in your, uh, in your learning dashboard after everyone joins tonight. The cutoff for the winter Robin is tonight at midnight. So if you want that extra special bonus, join by midnight tonight and we will make sure to give that to you. Um, Jean, I'm so excited that you just joined. We're so excited to have you in the creative circle. Um, I did want to really quick, we've had a couple questions about, you know, what's, what's the difference between, uh, what, what is a workshop? What is a workshop that we do versus like a regular painting demo? So I have three great examples here. So as a member of the creative circle, every week we release a lunchtime paint along. And these are meant to be small, quick, you can do them in a half an hour, um, painting exercises. They're, they're meant to be quick practice to just get you going and get the practice, get the reps, get the easel time that we're talking about. So this is an example of one of our lunchtime painting demos. They're meant to be done in half an hour to an hour and um, they're small, quick, they're not super detailed. And as a member of the Creative Circle, you have access to our vault of these. We have over 50 of them, and we release about 20 new ones per year. Um, so you have access to all of these. Then, 
every month in the creative circle, we do a painting demo. And the painting demos are more in depth. They're usually an hour to an hour and a half of teaching time. We do an 11, I do it on 11 by 14 panel and there's a lot more teaching. It's on a topic. I usually go in depth and explain the composition. I explain why it's cropped the way it is. There's some kind of topic like this one. I think we were going into some glass and I was talking about edges. Like there's some teaching topic that is reinforced with the painting demo that month. And then once a quarter, we meet in person online and we do a bigger painting. So this was our workshop that we did last summer. We did the sunflowers. And so once again, it's a bigger painting. It's more involved. It's more detailed. The process of doing something small and quick versus something a little bit bigger, we can really go deeper. And then it's live. So you can ask me questions as you're painting. Um, you can, it, it's a little bit more interactive. We get to know each other. Um, it's a lot of fun. And so this is kind of the difference. This is short and sweet weekly. This is monthly and this is quarterly. And so if you join with our annual plan, we have about 10 of these workshops that we've gone through and uh, you get access to all 10 of those. So we have all of, the, all of the paintings you see behind me that are a little bit bigger are past workshops that we've done. And we've done them on all kinds of fun topics. Um, the cow workshop was one of them. We've got the seascape behind me. We did lily pads. We've done all kinds of fun stuff. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to drop that in. We're going to drop, if you want to join the Creative Circle, we're going to go ahead and drop that in the comments for you all. And now I have our palette up so that we can talk to... Uh, talk about color. So the, that big one, I did it, that was 18 by 24. Sometimes I do them 16 by 20. They're typically bigger than 11 by 14. Um, and I, I go a lot slower. Uh, we often have, we get the color mixes and we, we, there's a little bit more production value and time that goes to it. Linda, uh, I, we, we've, you need, you should have received the email with the replay. Please check your spam and promotions folder. And if you have not received it, please email us, hello at shelbydillonstudio.com. Uh, we do not see all of the Facebook comments. So if y'all have been leaving Facebook comments, uh, please be, um, please email us because then we can keep track of it. We can look up your email address. Um, we've had a lot of people, when they signed up, they accidentally spelled their email address wrong. And so we want to be able to make sure the emails are going to the correct places. Um, where is it? Yeah, the email went out at 2 p.m. So if you did not receive it, um, please first check your spam and promotions folder. And if you did not receive it, then please um, email us. Uh, Karen, go ahead and email us hello at shelbydillonstudio.com and we can let you know if you join the creative circle. We would love to have you. <laughs> um, I understand getting sidetracked. And the best thing about joining the creative circle is it's like always there when you need it, but it's, we like to say you're never behind. It's this fabulous place to learn at your own pace. And you do immediately have access to all of our past skill builders, painting demos, and um, our skill builders and our painting demos and all kinds of, we have like 30 months of really fabulous content. Okay, I'm just getting this camera adjusted. Uh, yes, we do an annual membership and the annual membership is uh, you get access to all of those past workshops and the annual membership. Also, there's a discount to it. 
annualized, it'd be like almost 20% off the price rather than paying monthly. <clears throat> okay, so these, these are the three colors that we used yesterday. What I kind of wanted to show y'all today is you can't literally get every single color from these three colors, but you can get pretty close. So, and in the creative circle, we actually use slightly different colors because I am a color nerd, but, um, and I'm really, really particular about the blues. So I use ultramarine and teal, but I wanted to, I wanted to show everyone like, in a pinch, we can do beautiful things with, without having to like have <laughs> a million colors of paint. And I say that as a uh, color maximalist. I've, I've, uh, Rosemary has outed me on multiple occasions for having entirely too many art supplies and tubes of paint. So it is possible to make a color wheel and which is something we go over in the creative circle we talk about how to mix color how to get the color you want every single time uh, we use a couple more colors in the creative circle just because it's easier um, to mix some darks and like i said i get a little particular about my blues um, but i want to show us just if you painted with us yesterday and you have the colors from yesterday, I want to show you how powerful just these colors are. Like it's, it's pretty, pretty dang impressive what you can do with just these colors. So this is cadmium yellow. Uh, it's very similar to primary yellow, Hansa yellow, benzo yellow. Um, they're, they're all very similar, good mixing yellows. This is primary magenta. Um, I will in, after this, I wanna show you the difference between primary magenta and quinacridone magenta. But what I had recommended in the supplies was primary magenta and phthalo. So this is phthalo blue red shade. Um, these were the ones that we recommended. And so one of the things that I like to teach and that's really, really important to me for y'all is not just that you learn how to follow along because I, I can, I could have this be paint by number. I could have this be a wine and design thing where it's like, okay, mix two parts of this and two parts of that. And you could, we could create paintings together forever, but I want to teach you to be able to paint the things you want to paint. And I want to teach you how to find your own style. And so one of the things I wanted, I like to teach you is how to, how to do the things you want without always having to follow a teacher. Um, maybe that's a poor business model. I don't know, but <laughs> it's what feels right and what feels good to my heart. So today I'm going to give you a crash course in how to mix colors. Um, I am using golden. Uh, if you watched our materials, uh, presentation a couple days ago, I recommend, uh, if you're new to acrylics, golden is kind of the fabulous, uh, gold standard of professional acrylics. There are other brands, but golden is the kind of gold standard professional grade acrylic paints. Um, everybody carries them. They're easy to find. Highly recommend golden. Um, th this other brand is, uh, a beautiful brand, but they're a little bit more niche, a little bit harder to find. It's Charvin. And, uh, so just, if you're new, just focus on golden. They have phthalo blue red shade as well. They have the exact same, they have the exact same paint. Here it is. Um, they have the exact same paint. So I have yellow, primary magenta, phthalo blue red, and titanium white. 
I get a lot of questions. This is just titanium white. I buy it in a big tub because I use a lot of it. And then this is a condiment bottle I got from Amazon. I looked up like bulk ketchup bottles or something. <laughs> um, and and that's, that's all that is. It is nothing fancy. I got a six pack from Amazon. And that's where I got that. Um, all right, so before I get started, I want you all to call out a color. So give me a color, just like a one of, one of the basic colors. Not we're not we're not getting complicated yet, but I want you to call out um, like red, blue, orange, green, purple. Um, pick pick a color. Agnes, do I consider Sharvin a higher quality than Golden? Um, no, I'd say they're comparable. I enjoy how Charvin and uh, Golden are primarily one pigment, uh, single pigment paints, but that's, that's a more advanced question. Let's see, green, violet, purple, 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 blue, blue, um, blue. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with purple. And teal, orange, orange. Wow, this is so fascinating. They're coming through orange. Okay, orange is winning right now, So I and I want to mix a color, so I'm going to mix a color. So let's say I want to mix an orange. How, how, how do you mix orange? What colors do you mix orange with? Red and yellow. Well, magenta, the way pigments work. So if we were always taught we were taught red plus yellow equals orange in like elementary school. That's kind of true, but that's not really how pigments work. So if you think of like your printer uh, and how they print photos and things like that, it's pigment based. So we have to mix colors based on pigments. And so the pigment that is used, it's, it's called CMYK. So it's cyan, yellow, magenta, and K is black. That's how you mix all these full color photos. So what we use is phthalo is like a cyan, magenta is magenta, and yellow is yellow. That's how you can mix pretty much every color of the rainbow. So I'm going to start with an orange. And when I say orange, the way that I think about orange is going to be totally different from the way somebody else thinks about orange. You know, like, I this might be my, what I think of orange as a pumpkin orange, and somebody else might be thinking of sunflower orange. So orange is a very, any color, is a very personal experience. Like somebody else might think, this is orange. I mean, if you go to Clemson versus if you go to Tennessee, your idea of what orange is, is very different. <laughs> and there's going to be a really strong opinion as to which one is truly orange, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, these are both orange. Now, the difference between the two of these is that one is a slightly different temperature than the other. And so as you're mixing colors, I want you to start mixing colors and thinking about them intuitively. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to even bring Auburn into a guess. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just started a debate. <laughs> um, so the as we start thinking about colors, as you start mixing your own colors, I want you to start thinking about them in terms of the color wheel. There is no absolute singularly perfect orange. There is no absolute singularly perfect pink. Um, so just just to throw this out there, um, this weekend is my birthday weekend, and uh, I went to Tulane, 
and this is the first year we're bull eligible in like decades and uh we're, we're currently five and one which is unreal i'm gonna throw a roll wave out there i don't i don't know that there's any two lane fans but we're actually we're go going to homecoming this weekend um so roll i'm gonna throw a roll wave in there we are not orange <laughs> um so think about things thank you guys think about everything in terms of like a co one color in relation to another color uh this one has more magenta in it. This one has more yellow in it. Which direction do you want to go? Do you want to go, uh, if you have an orange, do you want it to be more of a red orange? Do you want it to be a more of a yellow orange? Do you want it to be more of a neutral orange? Do you want it to be more of a bright orange? Do you want it to be more of a light orange? Like kind of start thinking about colors as like directions on a map. And that will help you learn how to mix. Um, so let's say I want to have this be, let's say I want the slightly more Tennessee orange to be a lighter orange. So in order to do that, I can add some white to make it a lighter value. And as we add white, it does start to get a little bit chalky because white has a blue undertone. So it changes the color just a little bit. It's not going to be quite as saturated. So one thing that you can do is add just a little bit of yellow. So you get the same value, but it's going to be just a little bit brighter. So these are some, you know, small things that you can do to just, I mean, we, we didn't do any oranges yesterday. And look at these beautiful oranges that we're getting just from these four colors. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. It's, uh, it's, I enjoy teaching this week. It's, it's just a fun week. It feels like kind of giving back. Um, and we're, we're really giving back this week. We have, we have definitely raised over $5,000. I can't wait to tally it up next week and send them the check. That's, that's going to be so incredible. So give me, give me a direction for this orange. Um, do we want our orange to go uh, more neutral? Do we want it to go brighter? Do we Remember, when you mix two, and I'm going to tell you all this, when you mix two colors together, uh, they will never be as bright as the original colors. And the more colors that you mix, the more you work towards a neutral color, which if you feel like you mix mud a lot, it's probably because you've mixed too many colors together. So we want, let's see, burnt orange. All right. So we are going to do a burnt orange. So I am going to do this by with just these three colors. I'm going to do a burnt orange by just adding more magenta. So the red adds makes it deeper, it makes it darker. It's got a little bit darker value, so it's going to be more of a burnt orange when next to the original orange. And if we put this next to the Tennessee orange, it looks even more of a burnt orange. Now, if we wanted to, because we only have these four colors, we could add a little bit of blue and get a burnt orange to take it darker. And because we've added some of the, um, because we have added extra magenta before we added the blue, it made it warm. It kept it warm before just going straight. Uh, if we had more yellow in it, if we just added straight blue to this, it would have gotten more neutral. Um, 
So these are some things that we can learn that help you learn to intuitively mix. As we get darker or lighter before going directly for like the white or the dark color, you know, add a little, add a little bit more of the colors next to it on the color wheel. And that will help keep your colors more saturated. Um, like here's, here's that, the Clemson orange. Right here, this is Clemson orange-ish. And if I were to just go straight and try to make it a uh, deeper orange with the blue, it winds up looking kind of green. So by adding a little bit more red to it, we keep the heat we keep the characteristic, we keep the saturation, we keep the beautiful color. But, you know, as we're going, and as like, I, I know a lot of people um, really enjoy neutrals, like, oh, well, my brush is super, super dirty. But look at, look at this beautiful color that we can mix when we mix all of these together. That's kind of more of a reddish version. If I wanted to add more of a yellow, kind of do like a neutral taupe. Look at this color. This is just a beautiful neutral right there. And because all of these colors have the same colors in them, they really tie together beautifully. So, I mean, just from these four colors, look at, look at everything that we can do. Now, if I'm like, oh gosh, you get to the point in your color mixing and you're like, I didn't, <coughs> I didn't want taupe. That's all right. Just rather than necessarily uh, adding more color to this mix, it's okay to leave this mix and start over, especially if you're first starting, if you're first getting comfortable with mixing colors, don't feel like you have to keep going and you have to save the paint. Um, I, I recommend getting you know your few colors and using more paint than you're comfortable with so that you really get comfortable with um, using paint and you're not afraid of it. Like if I wanted, if I felt like this got too neutral and I'd really wanted a light orange, I can go back and mix that. And not worry about that one I had just mixed. Just start over. I mean, this is, this is art. Nothing is unrecoverable. There are no great mistakes. There are just lessons that we learn. Um, you know, it's, it's not, Gosh, there, there, there are no mistakes. There's just lessons. I think that's one of the great things. There's no failures. We just learn. And it's like, okay, well, this is, an, especially if we, if we learn something and carry it forward, that was a valuable experience. Nothing is wasted. Absolutely nothing is wasted. All right, so the other color, I'm going to show you how to do some of this with the blues. Um, so I just, I have a glass palette, so I just use a scraper and I scrape it off. 
I, before I had a glass palette, I used a disposable palette. And when I've been traveling, um, I, I'll just use like a paper plate or something. Like don't, don't feel like you have to have a fancy palette. Um, there are these stay wet palettes. You can even make your own stay wet palette. The best way to make a stay wet palette, I think that we have decided in the creative circle is uh, with one of those chocolate boxes. Um, you put a wet paper towel in there and <laughs> you put some um, parchment paper over it. The, um, what, gosh, what are they called? I can't remember. F yes, if you get one of the plastic Ferro Rocher boxes, they make a great stay wet palette. And um, unfortunately, you will have to finish the chocolates. So there is a cost to it, but I'd say it's worth it. <laughs> so here's a blue. And I wanted to make, yesterday we'd sort of talked about um, making an ultramarine. Because ultramarine is a very purpley kind of blue. So if I feel like... On the color wheel, phthalo comes out pretty much like a true blue. Ultramarine tends to be a little bit more violet blue, so I just add a little bit of magenta to it. And it winds up looking closer to ultramarine. It still has a very phthalo undertone, so you can really take it and experiment and see how far you can get before it starts feeling purple. So it's like, okay, I, I, I need it to be a little bit more, a little bit more of a red undertone. Start thinking and feeling kind of like the color is a direction. And start, um, you know, swatching. I, I swatch all the time. I have entire journals of swatching where I'm just exploring, taking the color in one direction versus another. If you are um, swatching, and especially with dark colors, I'll add a touch of white because sometimes it's, it's more difficult to see when it's dark. It's a little bit more difficult to perceive the color that you're mixing, so I'll throw a little bit of white in there to see if I need to adjust it. Like, there we go. This is more like an ultramarine. It's not exactly there, but that's, that's a really good representation. And if I were to put it next to just a phthalo in white, you see a big difference. Like, look at, look at the difference between these two colors next to one another. So when we, when we talk about temperature, when we talk about mixing colors, nothing exists in a vacuum. There's no perfect color. I would just say that this one is warmer. It has, um, I'm sorry, this one is a little bit warmer. It has like yellow undertones and this one is cooler because it trends more towards violet. Um, typically when we talk about like the warmest and the coolest colors, um, the warmest is yellow and the coolest is violet. So depending on where a color is in proximity to those is we'll say it's warmer or cooler, but it's all in relation to the color next to it. Like I can't say that phthalo is warm or cool. I can only say that it is warm or cooler than the color next to it. Karen. Yes. So excited that you joined the circle. Um, <laughs> so Judy has a great question and that's what I'm saying. There is no like, uh, well, okay. So I'm, I'm not going to say there is no, there's everything in art. There's somebody that has a rule and then there's somebody that's breaking the rule. So a lot of times you'll hear me say it depends. And that's what I mean by that is there science has come out with some pigment that is like the bluest blue out there and that they have like, they have defined that is, this is the blue, but 
even like I've met people that um, what I see as green, they perceive as blue. So literally the way that we are each hardwired is different from each person. We are all unique and a little bit different. So it takes a little bit of using your paints and mixing them and working one way or another to see how you perceive things. Um, so there is a phthalo blue red shade and that leans a little bit more towards ultramarine, but it's still a much cooler, a much warmer, much cooler blue. Sorry. It's a much cooler blue, warmer, warmer blue. See, this is where I have to get out my chart. Um, so a phthalo blue is much more of a true blue. The green shade leads more towards turquoise and the, the red shade leans more towards like an ultramarine. So I hope that helps you. I would say the red shade is probably uh, the closer true blue. The green shade can, can be pretty green looking. It's almost like a phthalo turquoise. <laughs> hey Mel, good to see you. Mel is one of our Creative Circle members. She is up in North Carolina. And it sounds like she is uh, driving through the Blue Ridge Mountains right now. That sounds like fun. So if I have a blue, let's say I have this blue. And I'm like, okay, I want to take it turquoise. Well, with these three colors, I look at this color circle, um, color wheel, and turquoise is more towards the green. So I just add more yellow. And that's what we did yesterday. We just added yellow. And it makes more of a turquoise color. And look at that really pretty turquoise. Some people would just perceive this as like a green, but all turquoise is, is a blue green. You add a little bit of white and I have a little bit more phthalo on my brush, so it's dirty, but it makes even more of like a, a true turquoise color. And so if you want it to be a little bit brighter, you can add a little bit of yellow to it. If you want it to be lighter, you can add white and you can make it cool. If you want to make it cooler, add a little bit more blue. If you want to make it warmer, add a little bit of yellow. <laughs> oh my goodness, is there, is there gonna be a creative circle meetup up in the Blue Ridge Mountains? That's amazing. Um, out of the orange mixes, would the browns be like a burnt sienna? Yes, this one right here, which had just a little bit of blue in it, is actually really close to burnt sienna straight out of the tube. Um, th the, uh, let's see. And this is just, this is a cheap uh, student grade burnt sienna. Um, Now, it's um, certain colors you can't quite get. Um, you, you can't get every single color as pure as you would like because it is purest out of the tube. And so we can't necessarily mix something that is as pure pure and translucent as what you see straight out of the tube but you know we can get close and this is a as i'm saying like these colors are a great starting point to learn how to mix and this these colors are great to be a starting point for you really being familiar with color and saying oh do i need it warmer great do i need it cooler great 
this is a this is a fabulous one where it's like okay now i want to make it more neutral how do i make this more neutral well you can add white kind of neutralizes things but it's also a little boring so if you want to we have a little bit of yellow in this this is blue so if we add yellow and red add a little bit of all the colors we can get a really pretty neutral color and just look at this beautiful blue gray you know we can we can make a really really pretty neutral gray with this add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red and it gets even more neutral So we can, we can really mix all the colors. If we want this to be warmer, I'd add more, essentially orange. We're basically adding orange to the blue. And so they're complements. And complements more or less cancel each other out to make neutral grays. This one, actually it winds up looking like when you put it next to the blue, this is a beautiful, subtle, almost green is how I see it. If we wanna make it even more of just a plain gray, we add a little bit more red. I mean, look at, look at these four colors that we just mixed. These are really, really beautiful neutral colors. And when we put these neutral colors next to these brighter colors, look at how it makes that blue pop if we put this gray next to it. All of a sudden that makes the blue looks so much brighter if we put the gray around it because it's more neutral. That's another way that we can um, accentuate colors is to put something less saturated around it. Oh, Tammy, I'm so glad that you're learning something. This is, um, it's really important to me. So first of all, I apologize if it sounds like the world is ending because we have some road construction that is, <laughs> it's shaking my bones right now. <laughs> so I don't know if that's coming through the microphone, but it's uh, quite, quite a lot. Um, ooh, I'm gonna mix a sage. Yes, I'm gonna mix a sage in a second. Julie, yes, it is 100% fine to mix different brands of white together. Titanium white is pretty consistent across brands. It's um, the, what you'll find a difference versus the professional and the student grade, for example, is that the student, you're gonna use a lot more paint with the student grades because they don't put as much pigment in the mixture. Um, Lori, so you've mixed the perfect color. How do you remember your mixture next time? Um, I always recommend keeping a color journal. And we actually, in the creative circle, I have a whole section about this. But like, I just, I keep a color journal, you know, and I have my, I write down what the mixtures are so that I can remember. I can always go back and write it down. And as you get more comfortable with it, as you get more familiar with it, you'll, have an intuitive feeling of exactly what color you want to mix and what it takes to get there. It's a, it's a skill. It's kind of like when you are making some kind of, you know, say you have a family recipe or your go-to dinner, you know, you start following the, rep the recipe step by step by step. That's instructions, step by step instructions for painting. But then as you get better, as you get more comfortable with cooking, you start adding a flavor that you like. You start improvising. 
And that improvising is uh, where you start kind of creating your special dip, you know, the, the super secret dip that you won't give anyone the recipe for. That's how you, that's how you get there is you start learning the rules and then you start learning what you like or don't like about the rules and you start adding your own little spin on it. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, well, we had a break. They go on break at noon and uh, they were actually going a little bit over noon and then uh, apparently they're starting back early again. I don't, they're not usually this motivated to work from 12 to 1. So here's, a really pretty sage color. I've been loving sage. And that's just a really, really beautiful green. If we want to make it a slightly warmer green, we can add a little bit of yellow and red. And like, look at both of those greens. These are just really, really beautiful sages that we got from these three, four colors. So, you know, we can, we have so, these four colors are such powerful tools that we have at our disposal. Diana, when I am making my own color charts, do I write down how much of a color I add? No, because uh, I can, number one, I don't anymore. And number two, it's kind of hard to tell. Like a dab of this, a, 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 a dash of this, uh, a scoop of that. It's not like teaspoons and cups, but I eventually develop a sense what happens with your skills as you practice more is you see, okay, this, this green is a little bit warmer. It trends towards a little bit of the yellow side. So I know it has more yellow in it and it's very neutral. So I know it has red in it. So you start developing a sense, but I know, but I know that I can start there from blue, red, yellow, and white. Um, <laughs> Glob, globby mess. You know, it. everything starts as a globby mess and everything is a skill. I mean, y'all show that you can follow along. And if you can follow along step by step, you have the skills. All it takes is practicing it. And it's just like, it's just like any other skill. It's just like learning your multiplication tables. It, it takes the time, it takes the reps. You understand the concepts. These, this isn't rocket science. I mean, I'm an artist. Um, I, I'm not building rockets. Um, this is this is something that you just kind of develop a skill and a sense for. Yeah, Laura has a great point. The particular blue or red that you start out with really helps, uh, really determines the direction. Um, I did, we had had several questions um, about quinacridone magenta versus primary magenta. And I did want to show the difference. <clears throat> Once again, I apologize for the rumbling in the background. Poor Rosemary is a little bit closer to it and I'm sure it's like shaking her rib cage. <laughs> All right, so I have this quinacridone magenta by Golden and I have primary magenta. So primary magenta <laughs> is um, 
really meant to help kind of anchor your colors for mixing all of the colors. Oh, good. If y'all can't hear the outside noise, that's great. Um, <laughs> Cause we're sitting here and everything's like, <laughs> so <laughs> if y'all can't hear it, that's fabulous. I'll keep going. So here is primary magenta. This is, it can feel like a red, but when you add where you see how it leans is when you add white. And you can see the kind of the blue undertones it has. So this is a primary magenta. I'm going to show you guys a cadmium red light because this is, this is the kind of traditional red that's recommended in a lot of uh, color palettes and teaching and uh, basic how to start classes. This is a much more orangey red. So this kind of shows you this definitely leans cooler. And in order to get a true red, we have to add some yellow to the magenta. And so when you add white, this is kind of what it looks like. And we, we go over a lot of stuff like this in depth, both in the creative circle, and we just went over it really in depth in our um, Confident Acrylics course that just ended. <laughs> yes, there is beeping and reversing. Oh my goodness. They are redoing like all of the big sewer lines and have been since June. We are so ready for it to be done. Um, so this is quinacridone. And the reason why I like primary magenta over quinacridone is because qu quinacridone leans really purple. It's a beautiful color, but it's, it's very, very fuchsia. Gorgeous, gorgeous color, but it is much more purple than this one. It's great because it's a beautiful transparent color. Um, so you, you can get some really beautiful mixes. You can, um, if you add some orange, some yellow to it. I, I usually typically just use quinacridone magenta for my backgrounds, which is why I have it in the fluid version. Um, Cause I, I don't, I don't typically use it in my color mixes. You can't get quite, if y'all were having some issues getting the colors that you wanted, it's because the quinacridone magenta has, um, has so much blue in it. It's hard to get really, really vivid. You, you can't get quite as poppy with your pinks with quinacridone magenta. See, it's just a little bit duller than the mixes that we were getting because it already leans so blue. It's hard to kind of like pull it back. Um, sometimes I rinse my brush. It depends if I'm kind of mixing in the same family. I don't like right now. I'm not really rinsing my brush, <clears throat> but you can still like, you could still do the flamingo with quinacridone magenta. It's just not going to be quite as, um, these are just a little bit duller pinks. They're not going to be quite as bright and saturated. So this is where like, I always recommend kind of work with what you have and figure out what you like. And as you run out of a color, maybe try a new color. I mean, look, that, that actually dried a really pretty like cherry red. Um, so yes, Teresa, on the supply list, we have uh, all of the links that you can, where you can get them. Um, Lynn, yes, the Confident Acrylics was separate. We just finished it. It was a six week intensive course that we did together. It was a lot of individual coaching and mentoring and teaching, and it was really, really incredible. 
Um, we'll be launching it again this winter, but um, right now we have the creative circle. Um, yeah, so if, yeah, if you were, if you were having a hard time getting really, really brilliant pinks and you have the Conocoderm magenta, that's fine. Um, you can still get beautiful pinks. It's just they're not going to be quite as punchy and quite as saturated. And you can still get some, like, let's see if I can get a salmon color from it. Like that, the shrimpy color. So that shrimpy color has a lot of yellow in it. Yeah, I can get a peach. I can get a pretty peach. It's not, it's not quite as, it's not quite as punchy. It's not quite as saturated, but you can still get a really pretty peach color. Um, you know, it's work with what we have. We don't have to, there is no perfect solution. No one supply is going to make you the most brilliant artist ever. You know, it's, um, It's the, what you want to say and how you're saying it and the practice and putting that joy out there that gets you there. You can still do, this is just a little bit more muted of a Mingo and you can still do a really, really beautiful Mingo. He's just not going to be as punchy as the guy that comes out of here. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's see. I hope I hope you guys have, um, I hope you all have learned a lot today. Like we, we go over, this is just kind of like a snapshot of, we have a lot of color modules. Um, everything that we do in the creative circle is really meant to help you stand up on your own as an artist and to really learn and learn the why and learn the how and not just follow along blindly like absolutely you can do that and as you're beginning you you have to you have to follow step-by-step -step instructions but the more you learn why the better artist you're gonna get the more joy you're gonna get the more it, it can be about your journey and so um you know, I, I, I can't have a week with y'all. I can't have a three-day course with y'all without giving you some how and why and how to like navigate color because I know color can be really, really confusing. Um, so I hope, I hope that you've learned. Um, I hope that you've learned a lot. Um, don't forget if you join tonight by midnight, uh, you get this winter robin. If you join annually, you get access to 10 of our workshops. We have the seascape, we have the cow, we have, uh, here's some water lilies. We did oysters this summer. Um, here's oysters. And oh, I wanted to, those of you in the creative circle, this is next week. This is our painting demo next week. So we're going to do this beautiful fall floral. I just love these jewel tones. Um, I had a lot of fun using um, these jewel tones together. And I, th I, I think it turned out really, really pretty. Um, so that, that is our painting demonstration. And that releases next week. <sighs> Gosh, it's been an amazing week. Don't forget to post your Florida Strong selfies. And, oh, I wanted to announce the winners. We have the winners of if you commented and participated yesterday, we picked three winners. You're going to get happy mail from us. We've got a great box of goodies we're going to send you. So uh, make, make sure to give us your address so that we can send you the box. And one of those three people gets a surprise dick book gift card in there. So we have Melinda Grafton, Carlotta Brandenburg, and Heather Anders. You all get a goodie box. So make sure to email us, hello at shelbydillonstudio.com, and we will mail you that box of goodies. And uh, tomorrow we're going to announce who won from showing up today live. And if, don't forget, if you post your Florida Strong selfie, we're giving away 
and Dick Blick gift card. And we're also giving three individual months away of the creative circle. So um, we would love to have, have you join us in the circle. We're posting the link now and uh, keep posting your, keep posting your Florida strong selfies with your Mingos. I'm just loving them. And I'm especially, we're seeing everybody's faces this time around. And that is incredible. Like I'm getting to see the people behind the paintings. So I love seeing your smiling, beautiful faces. Um, Cause then, then I get to know you. Um, and you know, it, it puts, it puts a person behind the painting, behind the screen. Um, so thank you all so much. I'm going to post a video tomorrow. Uh, we're not going to go live, but I'll post a video announcing today's winners. And don't forget you have until, uh, Tuesday to get your selfie in. So if you're just catching up on the replays, make sure that you post your selfie, um, so that we can cheer you on and that you can maybe win, uh, a month of the creative circle. So thank you all so much. Um, this is, this has been just a joy. So y'all have a wonderful weekend.